Hello and welcome to another edition of Paid Earn Remote. I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Keith Coglin, Managing Director of European Metals Holdings Limited. Keith, thanks for joining us. No problem, Dom. Good to see you. Keith, uh, you announced last month you'd uh, completed a new project partnership, JV, for over the Cinevec project in the Czech Republic. Uh, the, the deal is with Czech energy company CEZ. Was this sort of the type of deal that you were always looking for to progress the project? Well, yes and no. We've, we've known for a few years now that, or thought for a few years, that we needed to get a strategic partner beside us to develop the project. And I think that that's, you know, any junior in a metal like lithium or a commodity like lithium, I think, needs to consider that at what stage of the project are you going to need to get a big partner involved. And particularly with something like lithium that doesn't have a terminal market, you know, not LME traded, et cetera, et cetera. You either need a, uh, an off-taker signed up and, uh, and bankable or you need a financial partner or in our case, a, a partner that uh, potentially offers both of those things for us. Chess is a, is a company, like you said, they're not just an off-take partner that we've seen a trader or, or anything like that. They've actually got interests much deeper and much further in the supply chain, haven't they? Is that an advantage? Is that the type of advantage you were looking for? They, the, they are the national power utility. So their history has been mining of coal and the generation of power through coal-fired power stations and distributing that through the region. Uh, now, they, like most people in, in that part of the world and others, are, are looking to move away from the burning of coal, looking away, looking to move away from fossil fuels. Uh, renewable energy, green energy is very important to them. They have significant interests already in this field. Um, they also have, own the largest number of mobile EV charging stations in, in the Czech Republic and they're rolling them out on almost a weekly basis. They have as, aspirations to um, be involved in the building of a battery factory in the Czech Republic. So they not only are a strong financial partner, um, they're obviously also very well connected within the Czech Republic and the and the region, and that's helpful from a number of points of view. Uh, but they are also potentially an off-taker to the project. So now the deal is complete. Uh, what sort of structure does the does the investment take? What will what will uh, the company look like after the deal has gone through? So Ches's in, in, entry is into the project company uh, Geomet. So Geomet was formerly our 100% owned Czech subsidiary. Um, Chez are now a 51% shareholder of Geomet and we're a 49% shareholder. Um, we are the operator of the project going forward, at least until the decision to construct, which means that European Metals and our team will continue to manage the DFS, the feed study, albeit with strong input from, from Chez, uh, particularly in country. The, the, the deal with Chess was followed very quickly by uh, the approval of the mining permit from the from the Czech Republic government. Uh, is there, what is the situation now on the approval side of things? Are you are you clear for development? We we are clear up to the most advanced stage that we could be at this point with a preliminary mining permit, or in fact three different preliminary mining permits. That, that's as advanced as we can be at this point in time. Final mining permits, you know, don't get issued until we've concluded, obviously, the DFS um, and the environmental studies, which are, are all underway also. You have got the PFS in the back pocket, and, and does that open the way now then for the DFS to start? Certainly. So the DFS will begin almost immediately. We've been in conversations with the various external consultants who will run portions of the DFS for us. So Ches's uh, involvement in buying that 51% of GMMED um, saw them inject 29.1 million euros into the project company. That money is in the bank. Um, the, the budget, the agreed budget we have and work plan going forward to decision to um, construct uh, utilises the majority of that money, but there is sufficient funds there to take us through to decision to construct. Will the project look much different in the DFS than it has from the PFS, or is it just a continuation and a sharpening of the pencil? Not particularly different, no. Um, we, have, we have produced a PFS on the production of battery-grade lithium hydroxide. 
We've also produced, prior to that, a PFS on the production of battery-grade lithium carbonate. The DFS obviously will focus into one of those main product, product streams, and the final decision on that will be made in the next few months as we advance our discussions with potential off-takers and determine which of those two products is most likely to be uh, most desired in the region. Uh, on the funding side of things, uh, are you seeing interest from development agencies and develop, uh, European banks in that sort of thing? I mean, there's a lot of interest there, isn't there, at the moment? For There's a great deal of interest. And again, this is one of the reasons that Chess is such a good partner for us, because obviously banging on the door with a partner with Chess's balance sheet, you know, obviously we get we get a far better hearing than a small Perth-based, um, you know, resource developer. But... It's, it's not just the development banks, it's the EU themselves. So the European Union is very, very strongly supporting the establishment of a European battery industry. Um, I believe that we will be in a strong position to seek and receive some EU grant money for the development of the project um, and also some, uh, some funding through export credit agencies, etc., which therefore, you know, assist you in raising the equity part of the ticket as well. So I think that that puts us in a very good position going forward. Does that support extend to the community as well? I mean, it, uh, there's always a, a perception of uh, European mining projects that, that the community is very anti-mining and you're going to struggle to get community support. The EU has definitely stated numerous times that Sourcing raw materials, particularly within the region, is a priority and it's very important. We're also advantaged by the fact that Sinovitz is a historic mine. You know, the mining has taken place at, at this mine since the, um, the 14th century. We're looking to reopen a historic underground mine. So also being underground, there's a lot less social and environmental impact. Apart from that, the, the mine uh, it, it's, it has been a big issue in the local area from a positive point of view for many, many years. You know, it's been a, a large employer. There's a, a strong uh, um, parochial attitude towards the mine and we get great encouragement from the local um, authorities on reopening the mine and re-establishing the industry in the area. And you mentioned COVID-19, Keith. Uh, obviously, it's disrupted um, supply chains and timelines all over the, the globe. How is it affected your company and, and the project? With regards to our current operations and our, our immediate future, so for the next six or eight months, there is no impact from COVID-19. Interestingly, a number of the automotive um, manufacturers have already stated that they're not going to reduce their EV targets in the short term. So although they're making less automobiles in total, um, they're, they're still on track to make the same number of EVs. So we, there's no change in the commitment in the EU and, and various significant EU governments. It's great to hear that the project is still on track and, and the interest in EVs and, and development of an EV market is still there in Europe. Thanks very much for your time today. I'm sure we'll catch up again before the end of the year to hear that the DFS is well on its way. Thanks, Dominic. Thanks very much for your time.